I've seen some questions and comments recently of people asking why you'd buy Star Wars Squadrons when you can just play Battlefront 2 Starfighter Assault. A fair question perhaps, but a lot of people also talk about how they weren't a fan of Starfighter Assault. They don't like Starfighter games or vehicle based games and would prefer something like Battlefront 2 or Jedi Fallen Order when you're on your feet on the ground, a shooter or an adventure style game. Totally fair and understandable, vehicle games aren't for everyone. But just know that Star Wars Squadrons is a game and an experience like no other. This game is all about fulfilling a childhood fantasy, and is why I think even if you're not really into Starfighter or vehicle games, you're still going to want to try this. There's a reason this game has both VR and HOTUS joystick support. The game aims to simulate the experience of flying a Starfighter in the Star Wars universe as as closely as possible. It's trying to create the real thing, which is why it's not even close to Battlefront 2 Space Battles. It's a completely different game. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> this is especially the case when you compare gameplay between the two. Squadrons gives you more control over your Starfighter in terms of power management, changing the shield direction, and a huge customization system. Game modes are also completely different with different objectives, large scale fleet battles with capital ships, and unique map design like you've never seen seen before in a Starfighter game. It's every Star Wars fan's dream come true, right? Is this your dream come true or do you have another dream? Well, today what I've got for you is part two of my chat on the Star Wars Battlefront podcast with Eckhart Slider and host Sage Goodwin. I saw a lot of you enjoyed last week's episode. We talked about some of our favorite Star Wars games, whether or not EA should hold on to the Star Wars license and the future of Star Wars gaming. You can find that video in the top right corner if you miss it. Got a lot of positive feedback on that. So I thought I'd post another snippet from part two of our discussion, where we go into more gameplay details on Star Wars Squadrons and compare gameplay to Battlefront 2. And a bit later, we also talked about whether Squadrons would get a re-release on the next gen PS5 and Xbox Series X. If you want to listen to the full part two episode, you can do so on the Star Wars Battlefront podcast YouTube channel, or pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. Link in the description. But I think it's interesting to compare Squadrons to all these other Starfighter games. The other day, I made a video comparing it to the old games it's actually inspired by, the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter games and more from the 1990s. You can find that video in the top right hand corner too. But for now, let's talk some more about Battlefront 2. Why should I buy Squadrons when I've got Battlefront 2 right now? I mean, they're really not very similar. It's like comparing Mario 64 to the original Donkey Kong and Mario game. Like, yeah, it's the same general idea, but one is a lot more sophisticated. They're both good games, but one is a lot more sophisticated, which some people want, some people don't. A lot of people are kind of under the incorrect assumption that Star Wars Squadrons is just the Starfighter Assault game with some added, you know, things. But in reality, the entire game system has been built from the ground up with almost nothing taken from... Uh, from, squ from Starfighter Assault, I think Ian said the only thing taken was some of the how the AI worked on the capital ships or something. And the descriptions. Um, it's like, it's a much more complex game. The flying is different. Like, just a really good example. If you pull back on the throttle all the way in Squadrons, you just stop. In Starfighter Assault, you slow down. You can't, you know, do these complex maneuvers. There's no shunting energy. There's no, there's not really cu ship customization the same way. The flying is not nearly as fun. And uh, the forced first person perspective, I used to like playing first person in um, Starfighter Assault because the interiors of the cockpits are actually really well done. They're, they're quite beautiful. But they are. They're at such a competitive disadvantage. So the forced first person, I think, is a really good move. So yeah, it's the same general idea, but it's not very similar in how it plays out. Hey, um, Eck, I'm noticing you're drawing a lot of references to Mario Kart. Is this just like another opportunity for you to talk about your <laughs> Mario Kart skills? Is no, it, it's because... Are you trying to flex constantly berating us with Mario Kart references? Oh, Mario Kart, this might Listen, you know, Andrew, if you were as good as I would, would you let anybody forget it? Maybe if my ping wasn't 200, <laughs> I would kick your... <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have another one on my we'll server. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Come play on an Australian server and we'll see that. Yeah. I don't want to play upside um, down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the drains spin the other way. Yeah, let's go. You, you're caught. You drive the other way. Um, 
Battlefront 2 is a completely different experience to Squadrons. I think there's a few really key things. So it is kind of the control you have over your ship in terms of, you know, the power of the shields, being able to change direction of shields, talk to your teammates, navigate the Squadron Battlefront, I guess you'd call it. The other thing is the way, like you were talking about limited view and how in Battlefront 2 you're at such a disadvantage if you're flying in a Starfighter in first mm -hmm. person, right? A few of my friends and I actually went back the past few weeks and played a few rounds in Starfighter Assault and there are a few things the collisions are terrible you can't see you have no peripherals basically so anytime you hit an asteroid or something you immediately mm -hmm. explode right whereas in Squadrons one of the best mechanics I love in this game is the fact you don't explode there's no yeah, insta death you bounce off yeah. you bounce right off surfaces and everything else and it's just like that being in a Starfighter game I think is such a game changer because it, it makes your ship feel real as well it feels more like a a car in a lot of ways where it's just like you knock off things and you know i did this test where i just like flew directly into a, a ship or a capital mm -hmm. ship just like dead into it and it's amazing just watching the tie fighter kind of just like ricochet off and just like the windscreen cracks and you're just a little shunted but you're still fine and you can still fly off and be yeah. fine that that's such a difference yeah so so completely different experience altogether one of the big differences too i found is map design because Battlefront, one of my main problems with uh, Starfighter Assault and why I found it kind of frustrating, even though it was my favorite game mode, is there wasn't really intelligent map design. They'd put objectives in the middle of the map, but they wouldn't kind of have a flow of gameplay. Um, so yeah, that led true. to a lot of like spawn killing, a lot of spawn killing, a lot of kind of flying around the battle to do nothing or to just get killed. Whereas in Squadrons, it's almost designed like an arena shooter in some ways. So like each team, at least in... At least in um, capital ship in the in fleet battle sorry so each team has a side you know you've got protected spawns there's the map is designed in such a way that there's lots of intricacies um you're not just flying through open space there's tunnels you can fly through um and to me that's the biggest change just kind of how how well the gameplay mechanics work especially in fleet battles with that interesting sort of tug of war system i did not realize that fact about mm -hmm. you not like insta death that was one of the most annoying things to me about the the starfighter assault and it's it's so good to see that it's taking much more you, more of a realistic and i'm using quotation marks here realistic uh approach to to that type of gameplay yeah so it's like sometimes you'll die if you're low on health and you go straight in you'll die or if mm -hmm. you're i think if you're at enough speed if you're like going full full force with an a-wing and you hit something perpendicular you'll probably die but yeah. For one, the uh, the meshes or the the hitboxes are much more accurate in this game. So, like, the first thing I try to do is, um, you know how the Star Destroyer has kind of, like, that brim around it, and then, yes, like, it's got that trench on the side that you see, like, the Millennium Falcon fly through? You can actually fly through that in this game, whereas in um, Starfighter Assault, you would just hit, like, an invisible wall, and you would be destroyed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which sucks. <laughs> I yelled yell at my computer so many times. It's definitely some stream highlight to that. Oh, yeah. Especially because in Battlefront 2, you know, you build the battle points to unlock the Millennium Falcon finally. And then, yeah, you accidentally crash into a, you know, a little piece of rock yeah. or whatever. It's very frustrating. Yeah, that sucks. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys about the look of Squadrons. I've had a lot of people asking me and talking about how the game looks and just the color and how it's very vibrant and doesn't really look like other Star Wars games. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people argue Battlefront 2's Starfighter Assault looks a bit gr grittier. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. looks more like, I don't know, the Star Wars we might know, whereas this is kind of a lot more vibrant. There's mm -hmm. a lot more color. All the maps are very kind of like have their own theme. Like there's kind of a green spacey one and a red spacey one. Yeah. You know, they all look quite unique. But um, what's your guys' opinion on that? Do you think it looks too cartoony or too childish in a way i never got that feeling personally um I, I really like the look of the yavin map i think the the look of the nadiri map is just okay it's not amazing but i think like certain maps like the yavin one there's like one that's in like a nebula or something that we haven't really seen yet um it was kind of hidden in the first uh, gameplay trailer that one looks good i i haven't really had any problems but yeah i've, I've seen that comment a few times too yeah, I've I've seen the same type of comments as well. For me, there's one that this is they're still working on the game. So there are going to be visual changes as they get closer to launch. One definitely big point is they're going for a more stylized game just in and of itself. It's going to be more stylistic than we're used to. And I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing. I think it's going to be a good part of them making 
a name for themselves because we get gritty shooter stuff all of the time. This, I think, will make it stand out more. I also love how they're actually embracing the colors. I'm really liking with this next-gen push, a lot of the games that we're seeing are more colorful um, because mm. I think really the the definition of the PS4, Xbox One generation was grit. And mm-hmm. I think we're now getting to the point where like, okay, we we kind of got burnt out on that. And now we're able to, if this game came out maybe three to four years ago, it would be that gritty shooter. But now that we're, we're in this phase that it mm-hmm. can be more stylized. And I just love the color palette too. Yeah. I mean, Battlefront 2 is a phenomenal looking game. I don't think Squadron's ever going to look that good. It's just, it's not, a, it's not the same budget. Um, mm-hmm. So I think they probably lean a little more on art than pure fidelity. Um, but like the cockpits, True. for example, are one area where I think the graphics of Squadron surpass that of Battlefront 2. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that's a, a fantastic a point detail. to be made. There was one other thing. I just wanted to ask you guys, do you think there's a chance this could also be released on the next gen into the future? I was just thinking that. So I hope so. Ian has said that it will be released, um, but from my understanding, it's not going to be optimized. So it it will get a release, but I think it'll be the same. It'll okay. just essentially be backwards compatible. That's my understanding. Oh, anyway. Okay, I'm fine with that though. Like mm-hmm. as long as it's there and it's crossplay yeah. and it has you know the support of everything else. That's the fact that it exists on the next consoles. That that to me is just exciting. That's enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So thanks for listening to this. If you'd like to listen to the full part two episode, like I said, you can just search Battlefront True Podcast or click the links in the description. And thanks to Sage again for having me on the podcast. You can find part one of our discussion here, where, like I said before, we talked about some of our favorite Star Wars games and the future of Star Wars gaming. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord. I'll link the podcast on those also. And to stay up to date with Star Wars gaming. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. (laughs) Stay bombastic.